my name is Paul Musso, and uh, I'd like to go through this uh, DocuTrack app. What I'd like to do is first uh, kind of go through what is DocuTrack, and it is a quality system really unlike anything else in the industry, and it is something you definitely want to be uh, talking about uh, from a sales standpoint, but it's designed to take profit, performance, and protection to the next level. We work with the manufacturers to develop critical installation points and inspection points for each type of product. Uh, we also looked at industry guidelines to make sure that you are meeting all of the industry requirements for installations. We reviewed our risk management manual, and through our ADA risk management insurance program, we have close to 10 years of loss run data. Uh, we also reviewed what's in there and incorporated all of that into this DocuTrack app. The key benefits of the DocuTrack app are it increases the quality of installations, um, making sure that every installation and every point within the installation is done correctly, especially those critical points. It provides protection against false claims. Um, it's really from a legal standpoint, uh, it's not what you do. Your techs do great work. They work hard. They put in the quality time. And it's not what they do. It's what you can prove you do or did that makes a difference in a court of law. So this um, also provides protection to show exactly what was done at the point of installation. It streamlines a lot of the work and a lot of administrative processes. And, and we have quite a few built in right now, and we're looking to add more to that as we go. It serves as an information database for technicians and with the technicians, technical service bulletins, manuals, wiring schematics, everything they need can be right there at their fingertips. It provides audit capabilities for management so you can see exactly what's going on and how things are being done in your shop, even after the products are gone and out the door. It delivers a training platform for service, both for service managers and technicians. We'll get into that. And it's a great sales tool for the um, dealers. Uh, so what I'd like to do here is go through initially the tablet and the use of the tablet in the shop. So basically what the technicians will be using uh, this app for. So what you're looking at right now is the tablet screen. I have my tablet on a screen share. So everything we're doing right now is live on the site. The tablets are pre-provisioned with everything you need on it. The DocuTrack app is already preloaded. We will have user manuals, both for the tablet and the website, uh, as PDFs already loaded on there. If you select the internet, it will take you right to our support site, so everything is right there in front of you as you need it. We have a join.me app uh, that we put in, which is used by service, so they can do a screen share of your uh, tablet if that ever becomes necessary. So basically, when a, a job is entered into the system, get automatically pushed to the DocuTrack app once you're connected to the Wi-Fi. You would just select the icon right here, uh, the DocuTrack icon, to open it. When you first open the tablet, it will ask you for the location that the tablet will be based at. You select that location and it moves you on. After that, you won't have to mess with that. Each technician will have their own login. That way it knows who's doing that particular job. Um, most of this is very little entry. If you've already lo logged in, it'll allow you to just pull up a previous login, enter your password. It will then sync to make sure you have all of the correct information and data on your tablet. The first sync will be uh, a little bit longer as it's pulling all of the new information, all of the jobs, and all and, you know basically everything you need. All of the sample photos will be loaded in the background, so that's not going to take forever every time you pull a job over. There is a legal uh, warning that comes up. Just select I agree, and it takes you to the dashboard. This basically walks you through the process of um, a new job coming through for an installation. There's a couple of different ways to use the VIN lookup. One is by selecting in the box. You can start typing any part of the VIN. You do not need the entire VIN. If you just start typing uh, a part of that, the first part, last part, and hit the search button, DocuTrack will look for all vehicles with those numbers in the VIN. In this case, there's a couple. You can then select the job that you want, and it takes you directly to that job. If there was only one vehicle that had that number in it, when you set, selected that number, it will take you directly to that job. The second way to pull up the VIN is using the VIN scanner. By selecting the camera icon, it will open up the VIN scanner. 
Um, you can then scan the VIN number from the door jam of the vehicle. It'll find that VIN and it'll pull up that job and you're ready to begin the installation. How most people will look up a vehicle is through these other boxes. So when a vehicle comes in, you have the opportunity to take pictures of that vehicle and the condition of it. By clicking inside this box, it pulls up all of the um, uh, jobs that you currently have in the system. By selecting one of those jobs, it opens it up and it takes you directly to that job. On the vehicle intake, we've listed uh, a number of things that you have the capability of taking pictures uh, of. This is something that is for your protection and purposes only. You do not have to take all of these pictures. You can take all of those pictures plus more, or you can select whichever ones you want, or you could bypass this step if you prefer. Again, that's a, uh, a decision that your uh, shop can make. But the way this is designed to help is by taking pictures of that, uh, it, it allows you to give a report to a customer that says, here's the condition of your vehicle, we checked it out thoroughly, we're gonna make sure nothing happens to it, and obviously if something does happen, we take care of it. But it eliminates that customer coming back and saying, hey, you guys put a dent in my vehicle and in my door over here, and I want you to pay for it. And nobody really knows if that happened in your shop or it happened before it came in. This allows you to document those things. Is you would select this camera icon, or actually anywhere on this line, it opens up the camera, you would take the picture of the vehicle. It takes that picture, it allows you to say, do I wanna retry it or accept it? I'm going to hit accept. It turns that line green and stores that picture in that, lot, in that position. You would then go on to the next one, take the other picture. You're gonna end up seeing a lot of pictures on my desk here by the time we're done. Select okay. And again, it turns that next line green it lets you know that it's been completed and it stores that picture in there. So again, it allows you to document everything with that's going on with the vehicle. This also comes in handy. If you see something that's specific that you wanna document, you can add your own photo. So by selecting the add photo button at the bottom, uh, it lets you put in the description. By touching inside that box, it'll bring up the uh, keyboard. And at this point, you can either type the information or down here on the bottom, you'll see a little uh, microphone icon. By selecting that icon, you can just talk into the tablet and it'll do all the typing for you. Burn mark on driver's seat. So I hit complete. Now at the bottom, I have this spot that says I have a burn mark on the driver's seat. I can now click on that, take the picture, and I've documented the fact that there's that burn mark. So again, that customer can't come back and say, this is something that you did for me. And I'll, I'll go over with service how to be able to print that report out and hand that to the customer as necessary. One other thing, if I'm adding a photo uh, or anything, when you first pull up this keyboard, if the icon for the microphone is not there, if you just push and hold that key, it'll pop up. This is a programmable key. So you can um, uh, select that key for uh, typing in or writing in text and for smiley faces, whatever you want. So you can doing different settings. So if you do not see that microphone, just push and hold it. It'll pop up, select the microphone, it'll be there. And it'll stay on there once it's selected. You don't have to do it every time. All right. So I'm not going to go through and obviously take all these pictures, but uh, it gives you an idea of, of what you need to do. Uh, it does have the customer and vehicle information up top, so you make sure you're on the right vehicle. So whenever you're done taking whatever pictures you need to or taking all of them, select this back button, and it takes you right back to the dashboard. You also have the capability here to begin a new job. Uh, by selecting this, it opens up the uh, first the customer information, then vehicle information, and everything really could be put in on the tablet. Uh, I'm not going to go through that right now because I highly recommend all of that be done on the website. That way you, you know uh, the service manager or service writer can put that in, make sure it's correct, and then push the job out to the tablet. But any uh, and modifications you can make as you go through the rest of the installation. 
Um, but you have the capability of doing all of this on the tablet. Uh, typically, most shops don't want the, the text to be focused on that. They want them to be working on the projects. Once a vehicle is uh, brought in, take the pictures of it if you'd like. Uh, first thing to do, if you're going to be weighing the vehicle, uh, again, this is optional. It's based on um, what your shop's rec uh, requirements are on weighing vehicles and obviously the type of product you're putting in there. Uh, but you would just select weight analysis. And again, the same way you would just click on the customer that you want to weigh. It brings up this weight screen. So when you put it on the scales, all you do is type in the, the uh, box and enter the weights. And I will put all of them in right now. Oops. And we're going to go through. This will do all of the weight calculations for you and also adjust for other information. So as you notice here, it added the total weights. None of the rest of the fields are entered because it waits for the appropriate information. Once the vehicle has been, uh, the, the installation has been complete, you can come back to this screen and then continue entering all the rest of the information. So you would enter the rest of the weights. At that point, you would put the number of seating positions. You can put the weight of the wheelchair in, uh, which is optional. Uh, with the fuel, you just either click to the spot where the fuel cage is or grab it and drag it to wherever you want. And as you adjust that, it will adjust the uh, weight capacity as well. Uh, it takes into account the gross vehicle weight, the axle weight ratings, uh, fuel capacity. Uh, but once you have and enter all of that information, it'll do the calculations for you. You know the calculations will be right, and it will also warn you when um, uh, if if you were to exceed different capacities. So for so typically at this point, you would enter this information, hit save, and then go back to the um, dashboard back up here and continue working. In this case, I'm going to continue on just so we don't miss this and go through the rest of the weights as though we had installed the product and came back to do the weights. So we're going to uh, now enter the weight information for after the vehicle has been or after the product has been installed. Okay. Number of seating positions, let's say five. Um, I don't know the wheelchair yet. It's about uh, three quarters of the way full. My GVWR is 6,000 pounds, 3,000 pounds. Um, tongue weight is optional. You don't need it, uh, but you do need the fuel capacity. Now we're also working with VIN lookups that if the fuel capacity is available, uh, it'll pull it. Uh, we're in the process of programming the, the lowered floor manufacturer's information in so that if it's a Braunability Pacifica, we know it's a 19 gallon tank, it'll automatically pull that information. So any information that's available, we will automatically pull and enter for you to eliminate the data entry on your side. So in this case, I'm going to put a 19 gallon tank. And as soon as I enter the rest of the information, the system will do the calculations and let me know. Uh, what needs to be done as far as a tire placard and the weight capacity change. If you have exceeded, and we're changing this right now, the programming is being done right now, but it will be if you've exceeded 100 pounds, um, it'll, which is a meter requirement to uh, uh, replace the tire placard uh, or the weight placard, that will warn the technician that that needs to be done. This section here turns yellow to let you know you're over the 220 pounds. Soon it'll be the 100 pounds, uh, so that uh, something else has to be done. If you exceed the capacity, um, what will happen is in this new version that we came out, we had this out, we got some feedback. If you exceed the weight capacity, it will let you know that the remaining weight capacity has been exceeded and to stop. Uh, it will put a warning up. The new one will put a warning up. It will also then not allow you to complete the job if that uh, vehicle is overweight. You'll still be able to do everything you need to do on the tablet and push it off to the website, but you won't be able to close out that job until the uh, weight situation has been corrected. 
what that helps to do is if someone just enters the weights enter, and it's overweight, the note comes up, but they don't do anything about it, um, that job could be completed and can get out of the shop without anyone knowing. And all of a sudden, there could be a problem down the road that becomes a legal issue for the dealer. This way, it stops, it warns the service manager, and allows you to not to complete the job to make sure that um, it's corrected prior to getting out on the road. So uh, there'll be a couple different warnings in here on the new one, but at this point, um, again, it's doing the same thing, just a little bit stronger, a little bit better for you from a legal standpoint. So I'm gonna save that. And it takes us right back to the dashboard. So the vehicle has come in, I scanned it, it opened it up. I was able to take the initial pictures of it. I did the weight analysis for the initial weight. And now I'm gonna go into, this is really the critical part of this is the installations to document. And this is where we take pictures of the critical installation points of each of the different products. So I'm gonna click in this job and select a, a, a job. It will now open up and give me the information that has been entered so far. And I have the capability now to enter whatever other information that I need to. So first it takes me to the um, customer information where it says personal mobility device. This is for their wheelchair or scooter. They have one or two, you have the capability of entering it here. This information is optional. Uh, it does print out on the vehicle delivery receipt. Uh, if you have it, you can put it in. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, that's all up to you. You would then jump over to editing the vehicle. Uh, and at this point then it'll, it says, here's your VIN, your make model, mileage. Uh, basically everything you need to enter on the vehicle is going to be right here. Uh, so I'm gonna, uh, now that I have the vehicle, I can put the mileage in and uh, it's a new vehicle, say at 25 miles. It's new. I can put in the number of keys, um, number of remotes if they have them. Uh, this RO number or job number, uh, by the way, is customizable. You can name it anything you want on the main side and it'll stay that way when it pushes to your shop so that your technicians are looking at verbiage that they're used to. But you can enter that information. Tire condition, uh, tire pressure, again, just by clicking on it. Oops, there we go. It turns it good. This is where you would put your uh, Namita label number. Now the system will, as you enter jobs, it will automatically assign the next Namita label to that job. This is also on the back end, not on the tablet, but on the website, we'll be tracking your labels and your label inventory for you as well. But if for whatever reason you needed to either add or change that label number, you can add it or change it now. Uh, this question, is a lift being installed solely for the purpose of lifting or transporting cargo? That is a question on the uh, NAMITA form uh, for the label report that, and again, selecting if it's red, it means yes. If it's gray, it means no. It'll typically be no. Um, very seldom do you have to um, address that one. This does That's have all. a VIN decoder built into the system. So when you type in a uh, VIN, it will pull up the year, make, model automatically. If some of those weights are available, it will pull them in. Uh, a lot of the VIN decoders, and it depends on the, the vehicle, they will give you weight ranges as compared to the exact uh, GVWR of that vehicle. So it, it, like I said, if it's available, it'll pull it through our VIN decoder. So mileage is something that really needs to be captured. This odometer field is required. So if the vehicle does not have a mileage in it, you won't be able to get to capturing these CIPs. If you remember originally, this was grayed out. Uh, that's because it needs that mileage. Once the mileage is in there, then you can capture those CIPs. And one other thing with the weight analysis, I want to um, make very clear. We've had calls where people have said, hey, I weighed the vehicle and I went to uh, pull it up and my weights are gone. If the VIN number changes on a job, then the system says this is a different vehicle because it's a different VIN and the weights no longer apply. So if you, you wanna make sure that you put the VIN in, put the correct VIN in prior to uh, taking weights. Where we saw this as an issue when it, uh, one of our dealers had a um, CRM integration where it was pulling their information from their database 
and pushing it to DocuTrack. They were putting placeholders in on some jobs for a VIN, maybe the last eight or uh, some just a random number. And then once they got the VIN, then the service technician would put it in. What happens is if the service technician weighs the vehicle first and then puts the VIN in later, the system says, hey, this is a different vehicle. So those weights don't apply. So just make sure that the VIN is in correctly prior to weighing the vehicle and you won't have a problem with that. This edit product section, which I'm gonna to jump to now before we get into the critical insulation points. What I recommend is all of your products really should be put in on the um, website side, but if you need to put a product in on the tablet, it, this will work, it pushes it both ways. So let's do that. Right now, this shows me this is an ASL 250, a Bruno is in there. It's at, there's a, uh, capability of assigning a serial number to that, so I can put a serial number in if I want. If I don't want to, I don't have to. Uh, but let's say now it came in and, hey, I've got a uh, swing away that goes with that as well. So to enter a product on the tablet, you would just select, choose a manufacturer. You select the manufacturer. If the manufacturer is not in there or it's someone else, uh, you'll see there's an other note of, uh, or other down here, just select other. But we're gonna we're putting in this Bruno. You can put it in two ways. It'll depart. It'll default to by part number, or you could put it in by Namita category. So typically, you'd say I'm I'm putting in a Bruno, and I'm looking for a 250. All right. I hit 250, and I hit this search bar. Again, we've created smart searches for this, so you don't have to remember and type everything. Actually, we don't. We, we would prefer it if you select it from the list here. So you type in part of that part number, hit search, and it'll pull up anything from that manufacturer with those numbers in the part number. So I'm gonna look at that and say, well, yeah, it's a, um, the 250 swing away is what I'm looking for. Great, select swing away, it puts it in there. We have already programmed the system to say uh, what the swing away is and what pictures apply to it. So you never have to mess with that. If you wanna put a serial number in here, you can. Uh, if you don't want to, you don't need to. New or used, now you hit finished adding product. It now stores that product with the rest of the job. If you are entering something that is not in the database, so I'm going to put in a Bruno and it is a um, 99999, okay? And it doesn't show up. It will say, part not fine, please try by category. So I say, okay, great, I'll go to that. So I'm gonna hit by category, and what you would do is select the appropriate Namita categories for that. So let's say it's a brand new um, hitch mounted lift, since we're on Bruno. Uh, we're going to select the Namita category, and that is a um, unoccupied lift. We're gonna select the subcategory. And again, this filters it down based on what you selected before. So it's a hitch mounted lift. And what's the part number is, it's other. Um, enter the part number is 99999, which we talked about. Description is the uh, fancy Bruno lift. And I can put in a serial number if I want but it's not required, it's a new one. So now I hit finish adding product. What the system will do is say, since that's an exterior hitch mounted lift, it will now pull all of the critical installation points and secondary inspection points for a hitch mounted exterior lift and load those for you to take the pictures and the inspections because it knows what you're putting in. Uh, if the product is already in there, those are programmed. If not, it pulls it by category. Are there any questions with entering a product via the tablet or the categories or any of that? There is no category. So if we're doing something very custom. You would select other because if it, or if it's a regular manufacturer, great. If it's something else, I'm going to go by category. And okay. the Namita category is um, miscellaneous, I believe. Is it, is it, uh, or Oh, yeah. Miscellaneous equipment. I see it. That's great. That's perfect. Yeah. Thank you. So you do that and go through the process. Now there's a subcategory for that as well. 
and you would either select that or select other and put your part number, serial number, and you're good to go. If you're looking at this to say, oh, really, we're not really installing that one and not installing this one, you can hit the garbage can and delete those. So I'm going to capture the critical installation points. It again lets me know up top who the customer is in the vehicle, VIN, so I make sure I'm working on the right product. If one of the products has the capability of entering a serial number uh, and doesn't have one, it will ask you if you want to continue or not, or if you want to enter one. So I'm going to continue without it. I don't want to put a serial number in. Uh, recommend putting them in, but you don't have to. If the manufacturer says we don't use serial numbers on that product, then it won't even ask you. We've programmed that into the back end, so it only asks where there's serial numbers available. This will do a couple things. These are your products, and by clicking in this box, it lets you know what products, and you can select one, you can jump between one and two, it doesn't matter, or however many products you have. You don't have to take these in any type of an order, and you can go back and forth as necessary. But what it will show you is it lets you know this is the um, critical installation point, your additional groundwork connected to the vehicle. This is a sample photo, and it's the salmon color because it hasn't been completed yet. If I look at this and say, well, it's the additional, what are they really asking for here? By clicking on this sample photo, it brings it up full size. So you can look at it and say, okay, that's what they're looking for. Great. I'm going to go in. I click on that, excuse me, anywhere I want. Take the picture. Yeah, that picture is good. Isn't it beautiful? I'm such a photographer. And it loads that picture into the system. It turns that line green so you know it's been done. It puts the initials of the person who installed that. In this case, this is test user. And it also has an undo button if I want to get rid of this. So now that one's done, and I go on to the next one. I'm going to take the rear of the vehicle. Now I'm going to take a picture here. Again, it goes through says, yep, that picture is good, great, put it in, turns it green, lets the system know I took that, I go on to the next one. Since these are critical installation points, every one of these pictures needs to be taken. You cannot complete a job until all these pictures are taken. So it does a couple of things. One, it again, it helps document, yes, you did it the right way. It also helps to say, to make sure that, it gives you a comfort level that Hey, I you know doing this all the time, and I'm now I know that I hit all the key parts for this, and and we did it right. Now there are situations that you may not be able to take the picture. For instance, we have the wire routing, and you may need two, three, four pictures for that. You may need only one or two or three. Uh, there is an area for NA. If you say, nope, got it all done with these, I don't need this picture. There, if there's an NA capability, you can select that if you don't need it. Again, it lets you know it's not applicable to this installation, turns it green, and then you can move on. The key to this is, as a technician, you go to take a picture of something. If it's not right, it helps to show you, remind you, and say, hey, great, let's fix it, stop, go through that. When I'm done, take the picture and all set. So if I need to take a picture of a grommet, and for whatever reason that grommet wasn't in there, I stop, I can put it in, and now that potential short, the potential fire, the damage that could be caused by that is now eliminated because that grommet's in there, it's protecting the wire, we're in good shape. This is designed, again, to increase customer satisfaction because we eliminate problems from ever occurring before they ever happen and make sure the product goes out right. As techs, you guys do a phenomenal job really doing putting this in and putting it in right. And if there is ever a situation, it goes back and says, hey, yep, they did it the right way. Here's proof that you did it the right way. Uh, so it's something that can back you up with that. Uh, so again, if you say, hey, there's, we didn't go through any firewalls, that's an NA, click the NA, turns it green, and you're good to go. If you see something that says, all right, yeah, but I did that, but I also did this over here, and I want to document it, or I took my four wiring harness pictures, but there's two more that I need, just like we did with the um, vehicle intake, I click this, and it can add a new step. So I'm going to go in here and put uh, special instructions. And again, by clicking on that icon, I can just talk it. I don't even have to type. So I'm going to hit OK. And it will open up um, this opportunity for me to go in here, take the picture. Yeah, that picture is good. And it puts it in. I'm all set. 
This comes into play sometimes with some of the tie-down manufacturers. Uh, you're putting in a, a Q-lock or an easy lock and you're talking to the engineering department because where you have to mount it, you have to modify uh, something on it. Uh, it allows you to document that, put in who you talked to, what instructions they gave you in that list, take a picture of it, and now with that job, you have documentation on any type of special circumstance that occurred with that. So that new step is for you to document any way you want. Otherwise, all of these need to be green before you can complete the job and move on to the inspection. However, even though they're not, I can jump between products. So I'm gonna look at the swing away, and I'm gonna take a picture and load this just to show you what happens when you've completed with a product, and okay. So that loads that, it lets you know, hey, you, are all those photos good? Yep, they're good, great. Uh, I'm missing a serial number. Yeah, I want to continue without it. Now, once I finish the swing away, it jumped me automatically back to the uh, 250. If you notice now, when I click on here, this is green. That tells me all of the pictures are completed with that job. This is still the salmon color. That means there's still pictures needing to be done. In some cases, like you see here, you have to scroll through. Um, if you might look at that and see all green and think, hey, that job is done. No, if this isn't green writing here, and if this isn't green on the box itself, that means there's still more pictures to be done. We looked here and that ASL 250, the swing away is all green up here. It means everything is completed. So that's a quick way to make sure everything is right uh, and completed uh, before you move on to the next one. You'll also notice down at the bottom, installation complete is grayed out. You cannot complete an installation until all of the pictures are taken. So once they're all taken, then you hit installation complete. A couple of things up top. We are working with the manufacturers on technical service bulletins. If there is a TSB out on a particular product, they have the capability of programming that into the back end so that this uh, icon will show. So as soon as you pull up this job, you see this uh, warning icon it says, hey, there's a, a TSB on that. Click on that. It'll open up a web page or download the, uh, the uh, document, uh, a PDF, and you'll be able to read and review that technical service bulletin right there on the tablet in the shop. You don't have to go chasing it down. If there are manuals available, wiring schematics, installation schematics, things like that, or installation manuals, we will have links up here on that as well. And we're in the process of programming those. You would click on that. It would open up to that manufacturer's website. If they require a login, in this case, Bruno does, you would put the login in, sign in, and it'll take you right to those manuals. I hit the back button at the bottom of the tablet, it takes me right back to the app. So again, we wanna put as much documentation and information right in the hands of the technician in the shop so you're not having to chase it down. So I'm not gonna go through and complete all of these, but once all, everything is green, this will light up, click installation complete, takes you right back to the um, dashboard. You can also record a test drive. Test drives will be required when you're installing any type of hand controls. They are optional on anything else. For that, you just select record test drive, put the beginning odometer mileage in, the ending odometer mileage in, uh, and select complete. It'll store that information uh, with the job. So now you have documentation of your test drive. By the way, once an installation is complete and you select install complete, it will take you right back to the wait screen for that vehicle. So the idea is you wait it before, as soon as your install is complete, hit that, takes you right back, you can do the weights right there. If it is a vehicle that does not, uh, that you are not weighing or you're not ready to weigh it at the time, just hit this back button right here and it'll take you right back to the dashboard. Or you can select return to dashboard and again, it jumps you back to the dashboard. So now we, we've pulled up the vehicle by VIN, uh, we've done the intake photos, weighed it, did the installation, took the pictures, now it's time for that secondary inspection. So at this point, I'm going, I can log out um, by selecting dashboard, I can select this and log out. Anytime you're done with the tablet, you want to log out. If you do not log out, if the tablet sits for 15 minutes of inactivity, it'll automatically log you out. Again, we want the right tech being entered for all of this information. Um, so you would log out, the next tech would log in, 
and go to secondary inspections. By selecting that, it will only pull up jobs that are ready to be inspected. So I'm going to select that job. Just like before, it tells me the products that are up here, and I can select whichever product I want. It will give me the uh, installation points or the inspection points that I need to do. If they're green, it means that inspection point has been completed. If it's salmon color, it hasn't been. If you want to undo any of this, just click the undo and it just takes it right back off for you. Okay. So typically when you first start, it'll come up right here. If there's a technical service bulletin out on that vehicle, this will show up here as well. So with the inspection points, you just read it. Hoist shall be installed per manufacturer's instructions. Yep, that was done. Did not exceed the GVWR or the axle rating. Yep, that's correct. Uh, and you would just go through all of these items and just clicking on it, it turns it green. And again, it's logging in who is doing that inspection um, and enters that information automatically. Now there are situations like with this, the pivot tube ground clearance between 10 and 12 inches. If you select that, if it needs additional information, it'll pop open the box and ask you for the info. Just type it in or hit the microphone button, speak it in, it puts it in. Uh, that comes into play, it could be with torques, with hand controls, it could be with uh, uh, distances apart from each other or from floor to uh, shoulder harness on a, on a um, uh, tie down. But in those areas, it allows you to enter additional information. So all I'm going to go through and check all these as I check them, yep, they're good. That turns that product green. And once all of my products are green, my installation complete uh, button is active now. All right. A couple other points with the inspections. One, and by the way, both on critical installation points and inspections, there's also this um, button right here. This allows you to add additional documentation to the job. So. We showed you how to do it for the vehicle intake and for the critical installation points to take pictures. Maybe you're not taking a picture of anything, you just want to document something. This allows you to do that. Click on that, select inside the box, documenting some special situation. And I hit complete, and now I'm able to make an additional note as a technician on that particular job. Uh, again, jumping between jobs, very easy to do just by selecting this. If you ever needed, if you're going through, and one of the things you're going to notice too, is you have the capability of jumping back to capturing the installation points for this job. So for instance, if you're going through and this arm adjustment was not correct, and you went to look at it and check it out and say, nope, that's not right. You have two options. One is you can hit capture critical insulation points, it jumps you to that job, it allows you then to fix the job, go back in, erase this, take the correct picture, and then jump back in and finish the inspection, if that's what you prefer. Otherwise, uh, you would see that and say, oh, that's not right, log out of the tablet, so you can return that back to the dashboard, log out of the tablet, and then take it Go to that technician and say, hey, this needs to be fixed before I can do the inspection. Now they can go in, make the changes, take the right pictures, document it correctly, and then you can go back in and finish. Uh, what's nice about this system is you don't have to finish a job in all one swoop. You can go back and forth, jump between jobs. It will store and hold that information until that job is completed. One last bit. Uh, so now we've, we've done everything. We've checked it in, we've weighed it, we installed it. We inspected it, and that job now will be pushed automatically to the website and completed. Uh, and I'll work with the service managers on that. A couple things about this menu up here. Um, by selecting this, it lets you know who is logged into the tablet at the time. You can jump to the dashboard, you can go to help, or you could log out. This help screen does a couple things. There, it's a nice quick reference. If You've just entered something on the website and you're logged into the tablet. When you log off and log back in, it will resync all the jobs. If you're in the middle of something and something got added to the computer and you say, hey, I need this now, by going to the help screen and selecting sync offline data, it will go through and sync both everything on the tablet will be pushed to the website and everything from the website 
will be pushed down to the tablet. So if you want the latest and greatest information, go to here, hit sync offline data, and you're all set. Again, otherwise, it'll sync in the background automatically, but it will do that when you log in, log out, um, and or logging in and uh, different points when you're returning to the dashboard. It also lets you know, make sure you're on the right version. So from service standpoint, if you're having an issue and you call the help desk, there's a, uh, it'll let you know what version it is, but it tells you if you're online or not. Um, if the, the tablet allows you to continue to work even though you're not online. So if your internet is down, as long as the job was initially pushed to the tablet, you're able to go through and take all the pictures, do all the inspections, everything you need. As soon as the tablet reconnects, it'll push all that information back up. Uh, sometimes people have said, hey, my job's not showing up. Uh, if the tablet's not online, obviously it can't pull it down from the website. So that's a good thing to just to double check, make sure your tablet's online. And also let you know if anything needs to be uploaded right here. This last one right here is used by customer support. And that it's a very long, it's a much longer sync, but it creates a special database that the te technicians can look at to do some troubleshooting. So it's typically something you're not going to use, but the sync offline data is a quick way to make sure everything's updated. Uh, we have a support center that is open. It's a toll-free number. They are open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. So you're, it's going to be really early in the morning until 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific. They are also open on Saturday. Uh, I think until 5 Saturday uh, Eastern, so that would be 2 o'clock your time. So pretty much when your shop is open, there's a toll-free number to call to get support. Um, so we're, we're there to support you and make sure this is good for you, working, comfortable. Don't uh, beat your head against the wall trying to figure something out. Call the support center. That's on there. It's also on the website. Uh, anytime you need help, go to the help menu and the phone number is going to be there for you. All right. From the technician standpoint, that's all that they really need to know at this point. As far as working the tablet, we're going to jump into the uh, administrative website uh, portion at this time. With DocuTrack, the website is the heart of this, and it pushes the information out to the tablet. To go to DocuTrack, the URL is docutrack.app.app. So it's docutrack.app. Takes you right into this dashboard. First, I'll ask you to log in. This dashboard will show you multiple things, and it tries. It, it's designed to keep you on track of everything you need to kind of watch from a service standpoint and a QAP standpoint. The system will track your labels. You will set the warning level where you want to be warned when you're running out of labels. So if you say, hey, when I get down to 20 labels, 10 labels, 50 labels, whatever, give me a warning. This will pop up right here. So when you get below that level, this is here. If you're not, there's no warning here. It also allows you to track certifications. So this will let you know when somebody's certification is about to expire, and then also when it does expire, and that's where this past due is, it's expired. You can acknowledge it and it goes away, uh, or you could leave it there to remind you, hey, next time Adapt Solutions has a uh, training, I need to, uh, to get somebody sent up there. Um, so you put in the dates the certifications are valid through, and this will not notify you if uh, something has expired. There's uh, one other warning I want to jump into, and, and this has to do with the CRM side. And let me explain this button up in the top right. If you are programmed for multiple dealers, if you have a service manager that jumps between stores, you can set them up for multiple stores. And this is where you would be able to jump between those stores. So you would choose a dealer, select the dealer you want, and it shows you all of the jobs for that particular dealership. So you're not seeing stuff that doesn't apply. We did a um, sample CRM upgrade into Test Mobility 2. And there's a section that will have missing products. That missing products is to match any part number that comes across that our system does not recognize. Now understand the system is a smart system. So once you tell it something once, it will remember it and it'll continue to do that ongoing. So you wanna be careful, you wanna match this to the correct product and product type. Uh, but otherwise, or you can ignore it. So two things are gonna happen. You're gonna see a product and it may be a new product that Vigil MPD has out that we haven't seen yet, we haven't put into our system and we don't wanna stop your job. So you see that missing product and before this gets pushed to the technician to install this, 
that needs to be assigned to something. So you would select Assign. It brings up that manufacturer, or if it didn't know, you would be able to select the manufacturer from the drop dropdown. Um, again, the smart search on the website, instead of typing a few letters and hitting search, it automatically starts the process as you type. So for instance, if I start typing part numbers of what this should be, it'll give me the different options. And as I type, it'll narrow those options down for me. I'll look at this and say, oh yeah, that's actually Weigel's, um push rock hand control. I select that hand control, hit save. That product will go away and that product will then um, be matched every time it sees that number. That's used in a situation not as a new part number, but as um, an existing part number that maybe your system doesn't have an extension that ours does or vice versa, or it has your system is showing a prefix when ours doesn't, or a dash that's in one place and the other one doesn't have it. Those are areas that you say, yeah, that's the exact same product. I'm going to match it to that product, and now it's matched, and you know the system knows whether that dash is there or not. This is the product that goes into. There's other situations where it's a new product or something that's not in our system. And in that case, if I hit assign, just like before, if I start typing like 250, it'll show me all the different 250s there. But it may be something that is not in our system. Uh, so I'm going to put a 250D. Well, it's telling me that part number is not found. And, and what you're putting in here, by the way, is the manufacturer part number. So it'll say it's not found, so I need to add that part. Click Add New Part. Again, you have the manufacturer, and then it's all drop down. You select the product category because all of the critical installation points and secondary inspection points are built on product categories, the different Namita product categories. So this is still an exterior unoccupied lift. It is hitch mounted. If there was an additional category, like with transfer seats, you need to put either four, six, or eight way, that'll automatically pop up. If not, you're done. Uh, you would put the manufacturer part number in there. Now yeah, let's go ASL-250D. You can put the description in here and add whatever you want, um, and then click Save. Now, every time it sees that um, part number come across, it knows this is the manufacturer part number, here's the type of product it is, and it'll select the appropriate critical installation points and secondary inspection points for that product. It then goes away off of this missing product list, just like we did with the Weigel, and now it's matched ongoing. Again, you wanna make sure it's done correctly because it'll do that every time, but once you do it, it's done, and it, makes, uh, it now pushes everything that's necessary to the tablet. I'm gonna select Cancel, just because I wanna keep this for further training. When do you select Ignore? Um, there are situations where it's not a product that you're reporting to Namita. It is a part of something else that it could be a, a, an extra wiring harness that goes along with the main product that you're putting in. It could be a, an extra part that goes on something else. Uh, in those situations, you can say, no, that's not a reportable product. I'm not taking pictures of it. Just whenever you see that, ignore it. Don't bother me with it. Um, that way, it's not going to ever push it to the tablet. Uh, it's not going to be asking you to take pictures of it, and it's not going to be asking you what to do with this the next time it comes up on the next job. So you want to make sure there are no missing products up here prior to pushing anything to a technician to take pictures of. So this tells you all of the jobs that you have in the system and the information about them and what the status is. They're either going to be waiting for installation, which means it's waiting to get the pictures taken uh, for that job, waiting for inspection. So the pictures were taken, but now somebody needs to do that secondary inspection, and that's just waiting for inspection right here. Waiting for customer sign off. This allows you to electronically or manually sign uh, some different documents and upload them to the system. I'll get into that later. Waiting for submission. So that's submitting to Namita. It does all your back end, month end Namita paperwork. And then once those are done, it jumps to completed and it comes off of your list. So these are all your open jobs. You can sort by any of these headings up here. Just by clicking on it, it will sort. Uh, alphabetical and then opposite. Uh, you can filter 
So when you see this um, filter button here, select that and then select what you're looking for. I'm going to say it contains a TE filter. It'll go through and show me anything that just contains that or equals, doesn't equal to, whatever. You can look up ROA numbers that way. It's a quick way in any of these columns, um, either in this or other ones that you can filter. So uh, I'm gonna get, and if the filter is dark, that means the filter is on. Go back here and clear it, it shows you everything, all right? Um, so this is where you're gonna start each day. You definitely wanna make sure that, you know, check your warnings up on top, and then you can add jobs in here. So to add a job, select Add Job. It'll open up your job detail. If you have multiple dealers, you can select which one you wanna put it into. Uh, in here, if it's a new customer, or if it's an existing customer, uh, you can type that in and it'll let you know if somebody has, uh, if it's in there has been found or not, or you can select add new. So here I would put, if you have a customer number, you can put that in for information in there. Uh, add the customer information, email if you want, address. Uh, address two, it's gonna jump you to zip code. And in this case, I put the zip code, it'll automatically pull the city and state. So you don't have to worry about that. We're trying to eliminate typing. All right. Uh, so now I have my customer information in. I can put the mobility device information in there. That's their wheelchair or scooter, uh, or not. If I don't want to put that in, I don't have to. I'm going to select Save. Once I put the customer in, I can go back and edit, edit it anytime or change it. Now vehicle information lights up. I am going to add a new vehicle. And I put the VIN in, hit tab, it's pulling year, make, and model. I don't know what, uh, well, I'll put uh, 25 miles. So here's where you would put all the, now this information all comes out on the vehicle delivery receipt. So again, it's, it's not required, but I recommend you put it in. By clicking on it, again, it's drop down, so you're not typing. Mobili mobility vehicle type, I'm going to say it's a uh, lowered floor, and it's a minivan, uh, and it's a consumer. So you can put multiple in there. Uh, it's a Brownability, and it is a new vehicle. Um, so I have new, used, demo, customer supplied. Uh, again, just click and go. As you enter that information, hit save. It stores all that in the vehicle. Uh, I can put the RO number. Uh, it'll pull the NAMITA, next NAMITA label number automatically. This is where if you were using an existing label uh, and adding a product or doing something else or and that's not the right number, we're using this one, that's where you would have put that in and change it. Uh, these two questions, is it a pass-through or uh, you know, lift being sold solely for the purpose of listing cargo? They're defaulted to no. If you are not installing anything, just selling a vehicle as is, it's a gas and go, this is where you would select pass through. If you select it that it's a pass through, um, it will bypass some of the things on the tablet. It still shows up on the tablet because it allows you to, some dealers like to weigh even pass throughs. So we allowed it to jump to the tablet for weights, but otherwise it'll set it up as completed. If there's adaptive equipment, you can put all the adaptive equip equipment information in here. So uh, is there adaptive driving equipment? Yes. Was training completed? Yes, and now you can put this in. Uh, if this is no, if there's no adaptive equipment, then it doesn't let you put in all of this information about the driver training because there's no adaptive equipment. I have a question too. Are these yes. all? All of these are sorted by um, by jobs, not by customers, and not by the vehicles. And I guess where I'm leading to is sometimes one vehicle has more than one owner associated with it and sometimes one owner has more than one vehicle actually you could have one owner with multiple vehicles so it's job based initially we're going to be entering everybody because it's not being pulled from some existing database we already have but that as we get customers coming back for more work we would already have a customer's information entered in here so we could have their inter and, and and just pull it up without having to re-enter every time? If I'm in uh -huh. test, I have uh, test customer one, yeah. and I'm going to select them, and it will pull up automatically what vehicle is tied yeah. to them. 
Because typically, yeah. if you're going to add something else to it, great. Um, if not, and if they have multiple, you can select from that. Drop down. Again, nice. it's trying to be intuitive, but you say, nope, yeah. I'm put, they got a new vehicle coming in. Okay. So now yeah. I can put the new vehicle information in there with that same customer. That's great. So the customer is in. I'm going to hit next. It, um, it now allows me to add the product. This works the same way we did on the tablet. You select the manufacturer. Uh, you start typing. What, what's a little nicer about the website, Android programming doesn't work this way. So when you're doing a search, you start typing and then you hit the, the search key. With the website, we're able to program it. So as you type, it pulls up your options. And I'm going to hit 250A. And again, it keeps narrowing it down until you say, yep, that's the one I want. New or used, serial number, add the product. You know, again, it's that nag screen that comes up. Um, do you want to continue? Yes. So now that product is added. You can delete it if you want. You can look to see what photos and all are going to be taken for that, and it gives you the description. You go to the next product. Now I'm going to put in some uh, uh, or uh, Vigil hand controls, and I can either, again, do it by part number, which is how you want to do it, if it's not in the system as a part number, you have the capability of doing it by category. And what's kind of nice is, um, I know this Vigil doesn't make seat bases, but I wanted to show you one other thing really quick. If I do adaptive seating, and it's a um, uh, interior transfer base, the meat also has a subcategory, six, four, six, or eight way. If it applies, it opens it up. If it doesn't apply, you're not even going to see it. If you want to say, you look at it and say, oh, what are those categories? Click on category guide. This is the Namita guide that shows you all the different categories. You say, oh yeah, secondary controls, HVAC. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, so I put secondary and then HVAC and then I'm done. So I can close that out. Now I go to the category. So it's a little cheat sheet for you. But typically you want to be doing it by part number. So once you go through, you add the information. And by the way, if the product isn't in there, it lets you know, hey, we don't have that part number, so you can add the new part and it goes automatically to category. In this case, I'm gonna do this one and I'm gonna put a serial number because I hate that next screen and select add the product. All right, so these are all your products uh, and this is how you would add it. Again, selecting other. Also, um, we have in here labor only. So say you have a job, it's going through, you want to be able to document it. You need to label it, but it's just labor. There's no parts to it. You can select labor only, and uh, the part number is labor only. What it will do is on the tablet, it will give you the option to take some pictures, and it's pretty wide open, but it, it opens it up, lets the tech take the pictures of what they did, so you have the record of it, and then you can move on. So if you're just doing some labor to something, that's how you would put that in. When you're done, it finished adding product. Now that job is in and um, ready to go. So now we get back here, we're showing that, uh, so here's, here's the information, and again, these are waiting for install. Um, you had asked about sorting and, and finding this, you can either sort, or search by customer. You can sort by our own number, however you want to get to the particular jobs. So once a job, I'm going to get into some of this uh, admin stuff a little bit later. But you have, you can add new, show the open jobs, or add new is down here as well. Uh, all jobs, there's statuses where things are complete, like with pass-throughs that don't show up on open jobs because you're not installing anything, but um, all jobs gives you a little wider range. It puts everything. It puts the in process as well as completed because if you're having a problem finding where something is, it lets you find it that way. And by selecting that, it opens this up and just says, um, here's all the jobs. It'll let you know jobs are initially filtered by complete status. So if I go in here and remove the filter, this is going to show me everything, whether it's completed or still in process. Um, it's just a, we've had some issues where somebody just couldn't find something that's an easy way to find everything. Otherwise, you go to completed installations and it shows you all the jobs that are completed. I'm going to get into this here in a little bit. But 
first I want to get into the, the reporting. We talked quite a bit about the reporting side. Uh, label use and labels on hand. Those are your two choices. So the label use report will go through and it will show you all of the jobs that are completed waiting to be submitted to NAMIDA. Uh, it allows me to choose the month. So I can go back in here and say October or now I've got to do September still or I'm doing November, whatever it is. But you would select the month. You would select whatever jobs you want to submit. If you hit all, it selects everything. And then if you needed to say, uh, no, not ready to put that one in for whatever reason, I can deselect something if I want. Um, at this point, you would select view report. If you And this will now create all of your backend Namita documentation for you and allow you to view it. So it creates three documents. The um, label use summary form that says, this is what I started with, this is what I ended with, and I used eight labels, okay? It also lets you, fills out the summary form that says these are the eight labels and this is what I did with them. We're gonna talk about destroyed here in a little bit. Um, on some of these tests, I didn't have all the information in there. That's why the vehicle information doesn't show. But then it fills out this Namita label report for every single one of those jobs. So all of this writing, checking documentation is now completed with two clicks. Um, we talked about the mo mobility, the vehicle type, consumer, minivan, lowered floor. That's where we're, this information is coming out. The brown ability. So all the information and questions that need to be asked are right in here. And then it says, based on the product you, you decided or you selected, you don't have to enter this information because it knows a Vigil, whatever the number is, is a hand control, is a push pull. It automatically checks all the boxes for you uh, based on what you put in on the back end. And again, if our system doesn't know the product. That's why it's asking you those Namita categories. So it can assign the correct photos and so it could fill out this documentation for you. So every one of these now are filled out and done and ready to go for you. What I would recommend is it's a PDF. You can save it, print it, file it. However, you can have your own documentation of this uh, if you want. But closing this out, going back to this form so I can view it. Or if I hit submit, it submits that report to um, Namita. And so what will happen is I'm going to keep a bunch of these because I use them for training, but I'm going to say these two are ready to go. And yeah, I messed up that label. Well, actually, I'm going to go back to that. Well, no, I messed up that label because I stuck it to the wrong thing or whatever. Um, now I'm going to hit submit report. It now emails that report to the info at radco.com um, and it clears those labels out of your inventory. So now those labels are gone and that report's been submitted for you. Any question, I'm gonna go into the label limit. Oh, let me do that first and then we'll talk all, get questions on all labels. So now I go to labels on hand if I want. This is where you would receive new labels. So when you're getting down and you need to add more labels, click receive new labels, enter the beginning number and the ending number. It automatically has the N already in there and click OK, and then now it adds those labels to your inventory. So the labels on hand, it tells me what my label numbers are, the date they were added, and if I, again, got went in and hit the wrong thing or, or messed up a label, stuck it to itself, I can select destroyed. It'll ask me, um, this is going to be destroyed, are you sure? Yep, I'm sure. It now takes that label out of my inventory, so it's not going to assign it to anything, and it puts it in my Label use, that 218 is now listed in here as destroyed. So now the next time I do my Namita report, I can select that. It tells Namita that I didn't use that label, it was destroyed, and it gets it out of my inventory and I'm done. And as you notice, the jobs that I have in-house, uh, when I look at my labels on hand, they're not in that um, area to report to Namita because they're still in process and they're not in my inventory because they've already been assigned. If you ever delete a job or delete the label, it'll go back and in, back in here to be reassigned to something else until that job is done. But it uh, again, it helps you control and manage your label inventory. I'm gonna go back to, to my open jobs. 
So it gives me all my open jobs and it tells me the status of those jobs. It lets you know where you are with each particular job. Um, so once a job is done, it's going to go into waiting for customer sign off. And it, with any of these jobs, no matter where that's at, even waiting for install, clicking on view gives you all the information about the job. So this is the information we added about the customer. The products are already in there. You could add more product if you want, but there's a couple tabs across the top. And those tabs allow you to get to the weights. So all of the weights that were put into that vehicle out in the shop will now show right here. The notifications of the placard and all will also show right here. So all of your warnings will be up here as well as your weights. If you wanna enter the weights online, you can do that very easily right here. So depending on how you wanna do it, if the tech does it on the tablet or you do it online or a combination of both, you have that capability. We're gonna to jump to the customer forms tab. The system will display all of the forms available to be signed. This will include the make and operative, the vehicle delivery receipt, the vehicle weight rating, and if there are any required warranty forms by the manufacturers, those forms would appear here as well. You'll notice the green line up top for intake photos. This is where the pictures that you took of the vehicle when it came in would be stored. We'll cover that here in a little bit. But to start the form signing process, just select Fill and Sign. This will open up a form that takes all of the information that's currently loaded into DocuTrack and enter that into the form. In this case, we start with the Make an Operative. Again, all the information is pre-populated. And there are areas in gray that are editable that allow you to modify the form as necessary. You want to make sure you review those gray areas and enter the information uh, that you see fit. DocuTrack will also, for the make and operative, do the heavy lifting for you. It looks at the product that was installed and inserts the appropriate make and operatives. In our world, nothing is vanilla, so if you need to modify that, you can. Uh, say you put hand controls in a 57 Chevy and there are no make and operatives that would apply, you could just go in here, delete those, and that would take it out of the make and operative. If there's something you did that normally doesn't create a make an operative situation, but in this case it does, you have the ability to enter that as well. And whatever it applies, you can put whatever detail you would need to. So go through the form on the gray, make sure it's updated correctly. At this point then, you can click Save and Next. It saves that form, stores all of your information, and then pulls up and creates the next form in the process. This allows you to scroll through all of the forms without having to go back to the main menu. Again, now the vehicle delivery receipt, go through here, select the items that apply. There are some other items on here in gray that you need to make sure you review and, and also review with the customer. Yes, the tires are good. Again, go through and make whatever applies. Review the weights with the customer, things like that. Once you're done, again, hit Save and Next. This will scroll you through each of the forms. If you want to jump to a particular form, select the drop down here and then jump right to that form and you can move back and forth as necessary. Or continue on and this way you make sure you don't miss any of the forms. As you scroll through, it also creates these forms and sets them up for signature and also for printing. So on the weight rating form, there's nothing to modify. We hit save and next comes up with the Drive Master warranty form. Again, nothing to modify in this. Uh, as we hit Save and Next, we'll notice it takes us right back to the Make and Operative. So now we're back at the beginning. Now that we've made sure that everything is uh, modified correctly, we can begin the signing process. You can sign either electronically or you can print the forms for signing and upload them later. Let's go through the electronic signing process. This does require the Topaz signature pad to be plugged into the computer that you're working with. Each location received one at the startup. Once that is plugged in, you would select Begin Signing. What the system will do now, it will lock this form. As you'll notice, none of these fields are uh, editable any longer. This watermark that you see will not be on any of your forms. This is a test site that we're using before we launch this module. Uh, so this will be nice and clean for you. Opens up the first signature box, which in this case is the initials. 
Hit Save and Next. If there are multiple places to sign on that same form, it'll take you through each of those so none of them gets missed. So we're going to sign those. There are some locations where the uh, delivery representative from the dealership signs. So you would sign in here and continue on. Once that form is completed, again, it locks it. Don't worry about these dates. The system will automatically enter the time and date stamp for all of these forms. So now we're on the vehicle weight rating. We go through our signing for that. And again, you can review the forms either prior to doing this or as you're going through it with the customer. The last form is the uh, warranty form. Hit Save and Next. Once all of the forms and all of the signatures have been entered, it will take you right back to the customer forms page and you'll note that all of the jobs are completed. Now that the signatures are complete, you have the opportunity to print and or send this to the customer. To do so, uh, if you want to print all of the forms, select the All button and it'll highlight all of these forms. In this case, we're not going to print off the intake photos. We've already given that to the customer, so you can deselect. Again, you can select one, you can select multiple, you can unselect anything you want. At this point, you select the print button. It will create a PDF of each one of those forms with the signature. As we talked about, it automatically inserts the uh, time and date stamp in all of that. And now you have all of these forms available to be able to print out and give to a customer. It's a PDF, select print, it'll print it, and you're done. The other opportunity is to email this to the customer or to third party, third party payers or anyone else that might need this information. To do so, you would select the forms you want to send, select the envelope icon. This will automatically pull up the email address that's in the system. If there wasn't one entered, this field will be blank, you can enter it. If this needs to be modified, again, just go in and modify the email address as necessary, enter whatever message you want to enter, and hit OK. It will now create a PDF of all of those forms and send them directly to the customer. DocuTrack also allows you to enter other documents that you need to keep on file with this customer. For instance, you may need a driver's license in there, a training evaluation. If you want other information stored with this job, you can keep it all in one place. To do so, you would select this Upload Other Document. You would enter the document name of what you're trying to upload. Select Files. And then select the file that you want to upload. Now we have a driver's license entered for this particular customer. To view it, select View. It will open up or download that file for you to be able to view. If signing electronically is not convenient for you or the customer, you have the opportunity to print documents out, have the customer sign, and upload them into the system. We made some changes to make the uploading a much easier process than ever before. So we're going to clear out the uploaded documents and I'll show you how to upload signed documents. The first thing we do is complete documents the same way we did when we were filling them out for electronic signature. Again, by selecting fill and sign, we open up the document, enter the data, enter the information, make whatever changes we need to the document, and select save and next. We would then rotate through all of the documents to make sure they were all set up for signing and all the data was entered as appropriate. Once we've scrolled through all the forms, we would hit Save and Back, which would take us back to the customer forms, and now the forms are ready to be printed. Once back on the forms page, we would select all the documents we want to print and have signed by the customer. I'm going to take the intake photos out and select Print. Again, that creates the PDF of all the documents. You notice a difference on these new documents. Each document has a barcode at the bottom and that identifies the customer, the job number, and the form and the page number of that form, which makes uploading these a much easier process. So once those documents are signed by the customer, you would scan them to a PDF file. You no longer need to scan individual files. You can scan all of these files into one single file and then select Upload Signed Documents. 
hit the Select Files button, select the documents. Uh, in this case, we put all of them in one file. So I double click and select Upload. The system now will upload that to DocuTrack. It will read the barcode on the bottom of each of the forms and it places the form in the appropriate bucket in here, even by page number. So with that single upload, every one of the forms are completed. And when we select View, you'll notice that each of the forms are uploaded individually, even though we uploaded that folder as a whole. Again, just as before, by selecting all, it allows us to print all of the documents and give a signed copy to the customer of each of the documents. Well, let's go back to the customer forms page. DocuTrack will let you know here exactly what happened with the upload. If all of the forms processed correctly, this would be green. If there was a form that was already completed and you tried to upload an additional form to that same uh, bucket, it will let you know that that form was previously completed and it will not upload that form. To do so, if you needed to update that form, you could hit start over on that particular form and then re-upload the file and it will now upload that to that and complete that form and you'll have the latest one in there. If after printing something happened to the barcode and or DocuTrack was unable to read that barcode to determine what bucket that goes in, it would give you a notification that that page was not uploaded and you'll see in here that that job was not completed. DocuTrack gives you the ability to upload an individual form to any of these locations. This also comes in handy if you are using your own document as compared to a DocuTrack created document. So you may have your own vehicle weight rating form that you use and that's what you want to upload. Since barcoding won't work on that, it allows you to upload that form into that um, particular bucket individually. So I'm going to reset that and show you how to do that. So if that page didn't upload or you need to upload your own particular form, you will see this Upload Printed button that's available. By selecting Upload Printed, it allows you to select whatever file you want to be able to put in that particular bucket. So I'm going to put the uh, weights page in there, select Upload, and it will now upload the weight rating into that file. To view that, by selecting that, it will show you that the form is in there. Now you notice I'm still using the same form, but you'll notice there is no barcoding at the bottom. So I took the barcoding out so the system cannot read that page uh, like it would if you were to upload your own form or if for whatever reason the barcode was damaged, torn, or, or not really being read by the system. Now that everything shows completed, you're able to print or email the forms as we had shown you before. This job now moves from the waiting for customer sign-off into waiting for form submission to be submitted to Namita. DocuTrack also gives you the ability to upload multiple forms for multiple jobs all at the same time with a single upload. So I'm going to reset all these and we'll start over and I'll show you a, a, an easier way to do many uploads at the same time. To upload forms, once they're created and printed, you don't have to be in each individual customer form section to be able to upload that. You can also access that area from the jobs dropdown to upload signed forms. From here, you can upload multiple forms to multiple jobs just by dragging those files into this box. So you would select upload. You could select as many jobs as you want to upload at the same time. We're just going to do one right now and select open. It'll now pull all of those jobs and put it in the appropriate location. Or I have the ability to just drag those files directly in. And again, here, if I wanted to drag multiple files in, I can drag multiple at the same time. I could also have one file with two, three, four, five different jobs in it. By dragging it in here or selecting upload here, DocuTrack will go through, read each one of those files and let you know that everything is processed. If there was an issue with any of them, it will let you know 
which jobs it had an issue with. So now if I go back to my open jobs and I select a customer that we've been working on, you'll notice that all of the forms are completed. So at the end of the month, when you have a lot of jobs to be able to upload at once, scan them all together as one, put them all in, DocuTrack will do the rest for you. When you are uploading in bulk, always remember to make sure you are uploading the correct customer files. It doesn't matter what customer is open here, DocuTrack will be reading the barcoding on the forms and putting those forms into the appropriate job. Once the forms are uploaded, you have three different options here. Reopen will delete the signatures on the form, keep all of the information that was manually entered, and of course all the information that was in DocuTrack in the form will still be there and allows you to have that form re-signed and or make changes to it, additional changes, and get it re-signed. Start Over will wipe out whatever document was uploaded, it will eliminate any signatures, it will eliminate any of the additional modifications you made or changes you made to that document, but it will keep all of the information that's in DocuTrack into that form. View allows you to see the form signed and completed. I talked earlier about the intake photos. This report shows all of the pictures that were taken of the vehicle when that vehicle was brought into your shop. If they were taken, they would show on this form. To view that, you would just select the form, select print, and it creates a PDF of that file. So it shows all of the shots that were taken with the tablet in the shop when that vehicle came in. This is a great form to use with a customer up front when they bring their vehicle in for uh, something to be installed. The technician takes the pictures of the condition of the vehicle when it arrives. They can document any scratches, burns, or problems with the vehicle. And you can print this report out, give it to the customer, review it with them, and say, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, we're going to take care of your vehicle. Anything happens to it, we'll take care of it. But I want to let you know, we notice this scratch here or this dent here. Um, it allows you to make sure that you don't get into a situation where the customer comes back and says, hey, you put a dent in my vehicle when you're putting this uh, in, or there's a grease mark here or a burn mark here that wasn't there before. You can document those conditions up front. And also, if something does happen to the vehicle, it's clear that it happened after they brought it in. If you needed to look at that a little bit larger or see more detail, again, with the PDF, you can zoom in as far as you'd like to. Once all of these are in completed status, then when we go to open jobs, it will then move from uh, waiting for customer sign off to waiting for report submission. And that's where we would submit it to Namita. Um, we have set the system up that if service wanted to just, they got done with the job, they want to report it to Namita and sales hasn't connected with the customer yet to get the sign off, uh, it will, they will allow the service manager to report that job to Namita and get it out of their hair, but it'll stay on this dashboard in waiting for customer sign off. Once all of those forms are completed, it'll automatically move off of this and be, and complete the job. So if I go to the completed installation, this shows me everything that I've completed. I can, again, sort by RO number. I can sort by um, date, first name, last name. I can sort by year, make, model if I'm looking for particular jobs. All of these can filter by, and all of these columns you can sort and or filter by, the same as we did before. If I pull this up and I want to see the photos, by clicking photos, It'll pull up the job. It'll give me the basic job information. <coughs> Excuse me. It will show me the critical installation points for that product that I've selected. It'll show me the actual photos, who put it in when it was completed. I can select that. It opens up that picture. I can take a better look at it, close it, look at the next one. If I said, I want to take this whole job and review it with my technician, I can create a report that will give me the installation point and the picture who did it when it was done, all the customer information up top. This becomes a phenomenal training tool with technicians. So now you're going through saying, well, here's some things you did right. Here's some things we need to work on. Well, these were NA. 
so it tells you everything that was done with that installation. It'll also show you for that product, the inspection points and who inspected it, the date it was inspected. If you wanted to review the Nemeta report, say for instance, you wanted to pull a serial number off of that, uh, it'll pull up that Nemeta report, and if a serial number was entered, it'll show that serial number here. But it gives you the actual report that you can have. So if you ever get from a Nemeta audit standpoint, hey, I want to see this job, this job, this job, you go in, pull it up, and that job is right there available for you. So the um, basic information, install points, inspection points, and reports are all there by selecting that photo button. This is this portion here is parts based. So when I click on this line here for photos, it's showing me this job, but it's showing me the installation photos for this product right here. All right. So it's it's this push pull, Vigo push pull, or if I select this, it's showing me the 250A. So you'll notice on here. This job is on here twice, 906, because in 906 we added a 250A and we did the swing away. If I want to see the photos for the swing away, I would click that. If I want to see the photos for the 250, I would click that. If I want to see the job information that we were looking at before, I would click the RO number and it goes right back to that job information. So I have the job detail. Here's what was done. Here's what was put in. These are the customer forms and it tells me the status of them and these are the weights. So all of the information on the job itself will be uh, able to get to by looking at those completed installations. This also gives service the auditing capabilities as well. So you can look at this and say, all right, what do I need to look at? I want to see how jobs are being done. I want to see how this type of product is put in. I want to see you know, what's happening with a particular manufacturer, whatever. It allows you to pull all that information up and see what's exactly what's going on in your shop and how things are going out, whether that vehicle is there or gone. So that's completed installs. Reporting we did, photos. This is really cool. Um, with photos, what we found is sometimes a single point shop, small locations, even the larger ones, can be a, kind of on an island out there. And we've seen many times, or, or we've heard times that techs have said, you know, I got hand controls in, I never put them on this new vehicle that's out, I've never done it, I'm trying to figure out how to work it. And sometimes the manufacturers say, oh, you got to do this and that. Sometimes they haven't seen it. So if you want to see what's been done, you can go to install photos. By selecting this install photos, it will show you pictures of every installation, of every critical installation point for all of the dealers that are using DocuTrack. Now this information is scrubbed of customer information. It's scrubbed of dealer information. Uh, it's just showing you the pictures. But it allows you to, or a technician to say, how are they doing that? So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna select uh, Bruno and I wanna look at this uh, 250. And I hit apply. It'll now pull up, and we're changing this to a drop down to make it a little bit easier like we do with the rest. It's just not quite there yet. So it will now pull up the critical installation points for that Bruno product. So if I hit view photos, because I want to see what they're talking about with this ground clearance issue, it will show me all of the um, uh, vehicles that were put in. This is a test thing, so it's not showing everything. But I can go through here and show, now look at, um, and this isn't just mine. This is everybody. I can sort by vehicle, year, make, model, lowered floor. So if I want to look at a particular manufacturer with a particular vehicle, year, or make, I can do those sorts. If somebody's done that job, I'll be able to see it. So again, it's a great resource that we see as being able to see how other things are being done if questions do arise. There's no if, verification that what they did was correct. That is, is correct. There? there is no verification. This is not saying these are right. It's saying how they're okay. done. All right, so use with caution. Yes, um, by clicking on it, that opens it up full size so you can see it. And just like before, if I wanna print that out and take it out to the shop, it allows me to do that as well. Okay, 
So that's something you want to review with your technicians because when they get in those kind of spots, this becomes a great resource for them. So let's talk about uh, some other information. Edit my account. Um, basically allows me to change my password, uh, add certifications for training, and I would just put all that in here and make the change. Um, I can edit my location. So if I go to edit my account location information, by the way, all of this is in your manual. It allows me to put the information in here. We have the job number is a custom field. Uh, it'll say, uh, you can tell it what you want. In this case, I put in RO number. Some people use job number, some people use job ticket. Whatever your wording is, put it in here and your text will see what they're used to seeing. You can put in the point at which your labels, uh, your warning labels uh, apply. I put 100 so there's always a warning out there for me. But uh, put it in where you want to be notified on that dashboard. If a location, if you move a location by clicking active, it takes it off. And then uh, this is where you would upload your logo. That way on the vehicle delivery receipt, the weight rating form, the, uh, uh, the other form, uh, it'll put your logo on all of those automatically. So you upload it right here and that logo's on there. If you wanted to set up a specific test drive route for your technicians, you can enter that information in here, uh, put a map in from Google Maps or something if you like, but this is where you would edit, edit your uh, location information. Logging out is here as well. Admin, uh, user accounts. Once a person has been set up as a manager, you now have the ability to um, edit the different people within your organization. So if someone has, if you have a, a someone that's in the system already and has done something in the system, uh, and a, a technician leaves the organization or, or is asked to leave, uh, if you no longer want them to have access, you just hit deactivate. They will no longer have access to the tablet or the website. Um, this, if someone uh, needs to be activated because maybe they were gone for a while, now they're back, you can activate them right here. By clicking view, it gives you all the information about them and you can make whatever changes, change their password, whatever might need to be done with them. For adding a user, um, again, the same thing, you would just click add, you would enter their name first and last. Uh, these permissions, you would set up either as manufacturer, ignore, but either as sales, technician, or manager. Manager has full access to everything we've talked about on the website. Technician would have very limited access on the website but full use of the tablet. Manager has full use of tablet, website, everything. Uh, sales, a little bit less uh, activity on the website side, but has access to um, you know all the main things that sales will be getting to, customer reports, pulling up information, stuff like that. Um, oops. It's very important here, you would assign them a dealer. So when I select this, I need to assign them to a main location. So whatever their main location is, that's where you would assign them. So if I say I'm assigning them to test mobility, um, oh, I'm sorry, let's go up here. They need to have a primary dealer. So where is their main location? It's gonna be test mobility. Now, once they're selected here, they also have to be assigned a location. These two have to be the same, at least. So if you their primary location is test mobility, they also be, need to be in test mobility. Uh, so you would assign them to there. If you want a technician or a manager assigned to multiple locations, you would add whatever locations you want them assigned to. Now they have access up here, and when they log into different tablets at different shops, they'll have access to the jobs that are on those shops. If they don't have access here, they won't have access to those other jobs. So that's up to you to decide where you want them to have access. Email address and password, same thing. Certifications, that's where you add the training. So I have, uh, I can either edit this or add it, select add, it's gonna pop up and say who's the manufacturer. So I wanna add a manufacturer. And so again, just do the uh, drop down. it's easy. Put the date of their expiration if there is one, and that'll notify you when that uh, starts to expire. Products I'm not gonna get into. We've added the products, it allows you to add products. But on the user added products, it shows you, um, any products that you added that were not in the system. So if you're dealing with somebody local there that we don't deal with, um, and it's you pull, 
pull it up and it's not in the system, you can add that product and that manufacturer and it kind of keeps it to you. So all of your other stores can use that information. They don't have to re-enter it. They can just select it, but it's not going to be affecting um, some other dealer. Okay. And then the help screen takes you to uh, the support website. A couple really nice things here is there's a lot of frequently asked questions out here. Um, there's also the uh, DocuTrack um, user manual for the website and the user manual for the tablet. I highly recommend you get those, print them, review them. It walks you through step by step all of these different things. How do I do this? How do I do that? It uh, it takes care of all of that. Um, but uh, most importantly, too, again, these are quick answers. But also, when you are in the DocuTrack app. Um, here's that phone number is always there available for you. You can email them if you want. You can jump to the FAQs, which is going to that support website. You can create an electronic ticket if you want uh, or pick up the phone and call.
please give me your input. If you like something, let me know. If you don't like something, let me know. If you have an idea to say, hey, you know what, can it do this or, or I wish it could do that, let me know. We need your input to make this the best possible tool uh, that we can create for you. So uh, please keep me in mind and, and give me that input as we go through. So unless there's anything else, uh, we're done here. Thank you. And uh, any other thoughts, give me a call.